Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of Punch Bag by Robert Llewellyn. So Robert Llewellyn is the actor who played Crichton in Red Dwarf. He's also an author. Um, this book is a bit nuts. I mean, I'm only currently at the time of writing about a quarter of the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, as usual. So, Dane reads. 14 women, one ordinary bloke, and a whole heap of trouble. Nick hasn't managed to achieve much in 35 years, except a good set of pecs. He has a grotty flat, a stationary car, a teenage son who he doesn't know all that well, an ex-girlfriend who hates his guts, and a job as a nightclub bouncer that's going nowhere. Then Tara, a speaker at a women's conference, invites him to San Francisco. She wants him to become a padded assailant in a women's self-defense class. She wants him to wear a protective suit and assault women for a living. Why not? It's a free trip to the States. It's a trip that's going to change Nick's life, but will it be for the better? So I quite like this at the start of chapter two, it's just describing a very beautiful person. Occasionally, the mixing of distinct gene pools throws up anomalies in the human form. Some are interesting but not immediately attractive to either racial group, some very rare. In mixing Celtic Irish fishing folk from the bleak Atlantic coast and Native American Arapo from the Pacific Northwest, not forgetting a fair sized trace of Spanish blood for good measure, it is just possible to make someone who, when walking through the average shopping mall, will make most people miss a breath. Uh, Jermaine Greer is at some of the events that these, uh, this feminist group is running, which I thought was cool. And this bit made me chuckle, because I live in High Wycombe. Why did I have to end up with a bloke from Luton? Why couldn't I meet someone like Peter? He lives in High Wycombe, is that any better? Oh well, you go out with him in London. You get a, ref a reference to Nick, the main sort of male character in this. He wouldn't know how to use email if his life depended on it. I mean, this was published in 1999, so even then email was pretty common. I like this little line, children, children were mirrors, showed you how naff you sounded. Because they kind of repeat what you say back to you. And I like this little paragraph. I'm pretty sure these statistics are about true, if not 100% accurate, I'm not sure. Alice knew that any one moment in time, upwards of 2.3% of the world's population was involved in sexual activity. Although this did include illegal public displays of masturbation by lone men in parks, rape and bestial acts, prostitutes with their clients and nocturnal emissions, it was still a sizable amount of people. Even reducing the input exclusively to acts of standard sanctioned heterosexual copulation, you were looking at 2%. That was about half a billion people. Half a billion people grinding and pushing and gripping and twisting around with each other. It didn't make her depressed that she was part of this statistic. In fact, it gave her a warm feeling of involvement. She arched her back the way she knew Peter liked and felt his hands run over her buttocks sliding up her thighs. It was a ritual. It was a ritual that worked. Yeah. This definitely isn't accurate, actually, because if 2% is half a billion people, then there would have to be 50 billion people on the planet. If 2% was half a billion people, then there would have to be, what, 25 billion people in the planet? 25 billion, 2.5 billion is 10%, 250, yeah. That's not right, that's not right by a long shot. We get another reference to High Wycombe as well. We get quite a few of them throughout, which just, you know, pleased me. We get a reference to Arthur Janov, the guy who wrote The Primal Scream. Um, I only know who he is because I think that was what inspired John Lennon to write the song Mother. That was his attempt at a primal scream. Great song. And we get a reference to one of the characters. She lost her virginity to a boy from Cheltenham when she was just 18 after a disco. Maybe again that's a sign of the times, but I would, I'm pretty sure most people at the moment lose their virginity younger than the age of 18. I know I did. <laughs> Alright, so I need to highlight this because this is a tab that I almost missed. Well, I did miss it, so I need to go back here. Um, and this is uh, the guy chases off for a plane. Um, so we get this, really sorry, he said as the door was immediately swung to behind him. A completely bald purser in a crisp white shirt smiled genuinely. He held up his Scott Smart gold watch. You made it, sir. We could have waited another three seconds and that was it. The plane started to move off as Nick apologised and slowly moved down the corridor between the rows of packed seats. Mm. And I just don't think that's realistic because it takes ages for them to disconnect the damn doors and stuff. I, I just think it would take longer for them to do that. We get this. The screens return to the corporate logo and another heavy rock song bursts through the room. Nick had heard it a thousand times working in bars and clubs. He couldn't place it but knew Run DMC had something to do with it. Walk this way, screamed David Lee Roth. And Nick's heart skipped a beat as Tiffany appeared on the stage wearing a white miniskirt which barely patched her crotch. But it was Aerosmith, right? Steven Tyler. Well, maybe that's kind of the point is that he doesn't know. He's not aware of what he doesn't know. And we, it gets uh, said that statistically a rape happens every six seconds in the United States, which is just alarming. And so uh, De Detective Benson is talking about some of the things that got said by a rapist. There's a lot of this definitely trigger warnings about, about rape, although it is very female empowerment-y. 
You want me to pinch your little pussy, you fucking whore? You want me to touch your dirty, slimy cunt, huh? Is that what you want? Suck on that, you little dumb fuck. If you say anything, anything, I'm gonna open your throat with this fucking knife. You don't like it in the pussy, how do you think you're gonna like it in the ass? Bit of back door, huh, you tight ass little bitch. I'm gonna fuck you up big time unless you do what daddy says. Was that little kid I saw in the next room? Huh, I like the look of your little girl, maybe I'll have her too. I like a bit of fresh pussy meat. If you don't do as I say, I may make you watch as I fuck her asshole. If you don't seem scared, I can't get it up, so I'm gonna hurt you. Just cut off one of your titties, that'll help me, said Detective Benson. I guess those are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Not very nice things to have to remember, but there you go. That's my job, to like, know this kind of shit. And just like that, this YouTube video got demonetized. We get a reference to watching some, someone watching a black and white TV, which seems very anachronous, even for the time in like late 90s. Not many people had black and white TVs. Funnily enough, I did have one. I used to watch the snooker on it, but it was a black and white TV that my parents received as a wedding present in about 1986 uh, that was still knocking around. And we get a couple of references to Judge Dredd, but in two different ways right after each other, which seemed kind of weird. Um, and yeah, Nick takes his son some because his son gets attacked by a gang of girls. Takes him some uh, Judge Dredd comics that he found in like a second hand shop. And we get a reference to Gandhi, which I was going to say he wasn't a particularly nice person, but then um, later on we get... He was a truly great man who treated the women in his life pretty appallingly, which yes, he did do that, unfortunately. And I love this little line here. The world expanded, he decided, until we were about 30 and then it shrank again. Uh, as uh, turning 34 soon, I can confirm that. And we get... Um, Women can be violent, women can be real pieces of shit, they can kill and torture and maim, they just can't rape, that's all. But I would say that they can. I mean, there have been cases, someone has had this conversation with my friend Joe a while back, someone has been charged with rape, a woman has been charged with rape. Um, and then of course it depends as well, because you can have uh, trans women who could rape somebody with a penis, if you define rape as being only penetrative with a penis. Um, but there are all sorts of other you know, I guess you would call it a sexual assault, but you know. Anyway, we're not going to go into that argument. So yes, uh, Punch Bag by Robert Llewellyn. Very, like, thought-provoking read. Uh, it's presented as being, yeah, razor-sharp comedy makes Llewellyn the rightful heir to Ben Elton. It's not really a comedy. It's also not really a thriller. It's kind of a slow burner, but it does ask a lot of questions of the reader, which I think is very good. Um, if you're interested in, in any of the themes that I've covered today or have enjoyed the comment, uh, the comments that I've read out, the highlighted bits or whatever, Definitely check it out. I gave uh, Punch Bag by Robert Llewellyn a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Nothing great, nothing awful. So there we have it. That's what I made of Punch Bag by Robert Llewellyn. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.